So we've seen the order of transformations can make a difference, okay? But now, uh, the type of question that you could be asked um, could well be determine the actual transformations in order that have been applied to get from y equals f of x to its if final image. Okay, so what we're saying here is that I've started off in each of these cases with y is equal to f of x. And I need to find the sequence of transformations that I need to go through. In each case, there'll be two, okay, um, that will allow me to arrive at the image, which in the first case is one third f of x plus one. Now, um, I'm going to show you this kind of example of way of doing it first, going through these four examples, um, and then I'm going to show you it without the f of x, okay? So, um, looking at this, the key is identifying, first of all, what transformations could have happened here. Now, the plus one on the end is telling me that there might may well have been a translation by the vector 0, 1, okay? And then we've also got this one-third outside the f of x, which means there's a stretch in the y direction by a factor of one-third. So it's really determining which one would have come first. So let's see. Um, let's do that translation first. So translation by vector 0, 1. Okay? Now that would get us y is equal to f of x plus 1. And then, if I do the stretch in the y direction by factor of one third, y gets replaced with three y, so I would arrive at y is equal to one third f of x plus one third. Now, this isn't the same as what I should be arriving at, okay? So, although I, I may well have identified the two transformations correctly, I have done them in the wrong order. And remember, in some cases, the order matters. So, I needed to have done the stretch first, okay? Um, so... We have the stretch in the y direction by factor one third. Then y gets replaced with three y. So I've got y is equal to one third f of x. Okay, and then I translate by the vector. 0, 1. Okay? And that will get me to 1 third f of x plus 1. Okay, so in some cases it may come across as fairly obvious as to which order you must take. But in others it may not be. Okay? And may take a little bit of playing around to see which one is right. So let's try the next one. Um, we're trying to arrive at y is equal to minus f of x plus 5. So we identify first what transformations could have taken place. There's a translation by vector 0, 5, because of that plus 5 at the outside. And the minus in front of the f would mean that the y's are changing sign, so it's a reflection in the x-axis. So, um, which one could have come first? Well, let's see if we do uh, the reflection first. So, reflection in the x-axis. Okay, so we get y is equal to minus f of x. And then, I translate... by the vector 0, 5, okay? And I arrive 
at my answer. If you'd done it the other way round, the translation would first have made you arrive here, and then, reflecting in the x-axis, changes all of the y's, so y gets replaced with minus y, so you would have had y is equal to minus f of x, minus 5, okay? So it would have done it in the incorrect way, okay? So be wary. It's always good to just, it, when practicing, to check back to see what would have happened the other way around. Okay. Now, uh, C, f of 2x minus 8. So let's see what we're doing here. Um, this uh, is looking like there was a stretch in the x direction by a factor of a half because of that 2, and then looks like this was a, tra was a translation by the vector 8, 0. Now, um, in this case, I would say that, um, well, let's do this uh, translation first. So that would be 8, 0. So we will get y is equal to f of x minus 8. And then to get from there to there, this is the stretch in the x direction by factor 1 half. Now with this example, um, there is actually another way you could have done it. Starting off with y is equal to f of x, you could have done the stretch first uh, factor one half, so that would get you y is equal to f of two x, and then to get to y is equal to f of two x minus eight. Okay, you could have done a translation by the vector, not by 8, 0 this time, but 4, 0, because that would replace the x with x minus 4, which when multiplied out is 2x minus 8. So you will find that there are some examples where um, you can do the order of transformations in a slightly different way and still get the same answer, okay? You will get marks, full marks, for either. It doesn't matter which one you spot first and put down as your answer. Um, next. Right, last one here. Okay. Uh, y is equal to f of x, and uh, we're trying to get to y is equal to 3f of x minus 6. Okay, so here's another case where you could do it two different ways. Um, we could do the translation first, so there's a translation by the vector 0 minus 6. Okay, so we get y is equal to f of x minus 6. Oh, well, actually, um, tell a lie here. If I'm doing the translation by the vector 0 minus 6, we're going to hit problems um, now. So I've... Tell a lie. Let's backtrack on that. Race to head. Let's do our stretch first. Okay, because I, I saw that the next uh, stage was going to affect the minus 6 that we already had. So that's why I backtracked. So it's a stretch in the y direction by factor 3. So we get y is equal to 3 lots of f of x. And then I can perform the translation.
okay? And there we are. So that's our four examples. So it's just about can you spot what transformations are and then can you figure out the order in which they must have occurred, okay? Now I did say I was going to go through one more example um, where we're not using Fs, okay, just so we've seen it. Um, so we're going from y is equal to x cubed to y is equal to one half x plus one cubed. Okay? So there are two transformations at work. We need to figure out what they are. Okay, so this will be our intermediate step. Right, so first of all, identify what the transformations could well have been. We have a translation by the vector minus 1, 0, and we have a stretch in the y direction by a factor of a half. Okay, so if we do the stretch first, so stretch, y direction, factor 1, half, then we have y is equal to 1, half, x cubed. And then I have the translation by vector minus 1, 0. And that gets me to the final image. Okay? Um, if you did it in the other order, in the opposite order, you would have got exactly the same thing. So in this case, the order of transformations didn't matter. And it was just really identifying uh, the sequence, okay? Or identifying the two transformations that had occurred.